Somebody say tormentors. Now, how many are here, you, 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 you're visiting us today, and, you, and don't be embarrassed because we're family, but you're visiting us today, and in reality, you came, you, 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 this is the first time you've been in church, but you've heard me preach at your small group, the Freedom Family Group, at, at a house, on a TV somewhere. Raise your hand, I want to see you. If, if, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Come on, that's cool, isn't that cool? Five, six, maybe, all right, cool. Let's, let's welcome all of our visitors today, I think that's kind of cool. Somebody say, tormentors, forever free from fear. Number one, fear brings bondage. Somebody say, bondage. Romans 8.15, read it with me. It says, you have not received the spirit of bondage. You could lower my monitors or something. I feel like I'm echoing a lot. Again, to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Somebody say, in Jesus' name, I'm not going to live in the spirit of bondage to the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says it this way. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 1 John 4.18 says it this way. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear will always bring torment. Hebrews 2.14 says it this way, through death, Jesus destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and released those who through fear were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All their life. That means you could live and die and live the whole, in your entire life, having it lived in bondage. As I begin to study fear, I realize every sin finds its origination in fear. Anger, fear. Lust, fear. Anxiety, the sin of worry, fear. Every sin finds its origination in fear. So if you and I don't recognize it and don't see it, we may never see the source of our problem. So you may be angry all the time. Angry all the time. Frustrated all the time. And ask God, God, help me with my anger. Help me with my frustration. And God will start dealing with you in the area of your, of your fear. But if you don't recognize it as fear, you may not even be open to it. But all that is a hidden fear there. When people start getting angry and they're always agitated, I like to stop them and say, what are you afraid of? The fear of lack. The fear of failure. The fear of sickness. The fear of man. Some of you have not obeyed God in serving God because you're afraid of your boyfriend leaving you. Or your girlfriend not wanting to be part of it. So you allow the fear of man to stop your peace. Your destiny. The fear of man will bring bondage. Anytime you find fear left unchecked, you'll find that area of your life in bondage. And bondage is no fun. Yep. The alcoholic, his, the root of his alcoholism is fear. Maybe dealing with his problem sober. All of it is fear-based. 
We got to beat fear, guys. We got to get free from the bondage of fear. Say amen, somebody. Wherever we walk in fear, we put ourselves in bondage to the things we are afraid of. And they can literally begin to control us. Now, we're not being led by the Spirit of God as sons of God, but we're being led by the Spirit of fear. Questions, man, you got to ask yourself, where, what have I missed in life? Because I didn't know how to overcome fear. As a Christian, I'm not to be led by fear. I'm to be led by the Spirit of God. But when I have all these fears operating in my life, God tells me to go left. But my fear drives me to go right. And because my fear revelation, my fear, my internal conversation is greater, is, is more fear-based then I'm going to go with my fear and I'm going to go right where the devil wants me to go. Because remember this, remember this, there's two major laws in the earth right now. The law of sin and death and the law of life in Christ. Sin and death, say it, sin and death, life in Christ. Where there's sin and death, now don't just think death dying. Because you could be dying and still be breathing. Your marriage may be dying, but you still lay in the same bed every night. Don't think dying is... A, a, no. See, we got to get rid of dying. Like, that's the, end, that's the end result of dying. Before complete death happens, there's a process of decay. And where there's sin, there's death. And, the, and, and what connects me? To sin and death, fear. Fear. So when I have fear, I have the law of sin and death. I have Satan's dominion, Satan's authority, Satan's power, his lack, his killing, his stealing, his destroying. Fear connects me to Satan. Fear connects me to the curse. Fear connects me to the bondage. And some families are raised training their children how to worry. The whole world, all you got to do is get your phone, click on the Yahoo News. They sell fear. And people eat it up by the trillions. Not knowing that they're eating their own destruction. If you sit there and hang out with fearful people and negative people and people are always stressed out in life, it's only a matter of time before their mentality gets into your mentality and you begin to believe like them, speak like them, and the same curses they have in their life, you'll get it in your life too. Because Satan loves fear. It's his language. It's his Bible. That's how he brings the curse in. That's how he brings sin and death in. So you got to... You don't sit there and play with fear like you got it. Sometimes we think we're in control, but no, you're being played like a puppet. So when you, talk, when you start talking about fear, secret fear, all this kind of worry, anxiety, stress, torment, man, you got to attack that kind of stuff. You can't just sit there and play with it and leave the news on and all the garbage watching TV all day and listening to all these negative voices all day and then expect to come out of bondage. You got to make a commitment today, a commitment to change, a commitment for deliverance, a commitment to walk in the blessing of God, not the curse of the enemy. Well, how do I do that? Well, what's the opposite of fear? Uh, three people know it. Thank God for three people that are going to come out of bondage. What's the opposite of fear? A hundred people know it. Try it one more time. What's the opposite of fear? Faith. All right. So if faith, if fear brings the curse then faith brings, come on. If fear brings sin and death, then faith brings life in Christ. Fear brings bondage. Faith brings. Faith cometh by hearing what? The truth. The word of God is the truth. 
My, my body's sick is a reality. It's a fact, but it's not the truth. The truth is, by his stripes, I'm healed. The fact is, my marriage is struggling. But the truth is, what God put together, let no man separate it. The fact is, my children are running wild, but the truth is, all my children shall come home from distant lands. The facts say, my finances are running out, but the truth says, my God shall supply all my need. Faith cometh by hearing the truth. Jesus said, if you know the truth, develop a relationship with the truth, the word, the word know means gnosko. It's intimate working knowledge. It's the same word used for a man and woman when they come together in holy matrimony. Not from the ceremony part, but when they, the honeymoon part. It literally means to have intimate working knowledge. To be that close, to become one with. And Jesus says, when you develop a relationship with my word, when you develop a relationship with the truth, where you love the truth, and you, fall, you wake up at night with the truth, and you meditate in the truth day and night, and the truth becomes the final authority in your life, not the sickness, not the need, not the poverty, not the situation, but the truth, then Jesus said, son, the truth is going to make you free. Come on, give God a praise. Turn me back up where I was. Somebody give God a shout of praise like there's truth. Turn my monitors up. Somebody say the truth will make me free. The truth is where my faith is. My faith is not in a lie. My faith is not in fear. My faith is in the truth. And I'm walking in my freedom because of it. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm not being led by circumstances. I'm not being led by what I see. I'm not being led by what I feel. I'm not being led by what circumstances are saying. Then I'm not being led by God. I'm being led by circumstances. I'm not being led by the word of God. I'm being led by feelings. I'm not being led by the word of God. I'm being led by emotions. Let me tell you, you can't trust your feelings sometimes. You can't trust your gut instinct sometimes. You can't trust your own mind sometimes. And you definitely can't trust people sometimes. So you got to be able to trust something. You got to go to the Word of God and stand on the Word of God. The Word of God is the final authority about my situation. We don't base our life off circumstances. We base our life off the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to point number two. Let's get rid of fear. Look at your name and say, you got to get rid of it. Can you do me a favor? Kind of like, like just on your neighbor's shoulder, just kind of dust off like you got a little broom in your hand. Just kind of dust off. And just sound, we're going to get that off you today. Come on, just tell them. We're gonna, not, I didn't say punch your neighbor. Come on, some of you like, just, just, just go like that. Kinda, we're going to get that off you today. Come on, just, we're going to get that off you today. I want you to say this with me. Cast all your fear, worry, and care on Jesus today. Now, how many want to do good in life? Okay, good. How many want to do great? Okay, good. How many high achievers? I want to talk to the high achievers. Th three of you? Lord, help me, Jesus. Man, I, I, I'm a high achiever. I, I want to talk to some high achievers. Who's some high achievers in here? Come on. It don't matter where you come from. Don't talk, talk, talk about being a welfare and I've been a drug addict and all this stuff. That, that's your past. You're a new creation. You're a high achiever. Come on. You got the most high God on your side now. Don't come at me sideways. Now, how many want to be a high achiever in life? Amen. That's God's will. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. We're going to get you through that. That's why you're here. We're going to get you through that. You're going to get past that. And then you're going to achieve what God has for your life. Amen. High achiever. All right. Now, you good? All right. Let's go. So high achiever, talking to you. Where you at? Okay. Listen, high achiever. This is why. Oh, Lord. This is going to be worth your gas money right now. Come on. You ready? That's why. God's not interested in your talent or your gifting. He's more interested in your character. Not even in your integrity. Because your integrity is the result of your character. Because some people have integrity, but they have wrong character. 
So they get in an airplane and crash into a building thinking they're doing it for God. They got integrity, got no character. I'm going somewhere. Character is also the ability to take on high level of responsibility. Watch me. At the same time living in the peace of God. So I'm able to, I'm able to, I'm able to handle millions and everything millions brings. The pressure, $25,000 electric bills, come on somebody. Lawsuits, haters, liars, staff, situation, big decision making, working with teams, building out. Organizational development, everything that goes with that kind of high achiever, million flow, right? I'm able to handle it and still go to bed at night, put my head on the pillow, and not worry about any of it. What? That's character. Three claps and an amen. I got no high achiever. See, some of you, I want to be a high achiever. No, I don't want to be a high achiever. Come on. Yeah, you do. Because otherwise, that's why high achievers have. Low marriage achievers. They're low because they bring all that home from the office to the marriage, from the office to the children, from the office to their relationship with God, which is not effective. From the office, they bring it home to their own lives. They're all stressed, sick, beat up, disgusted. They're looking old before their time. No, God wants you to be a high achiever. He wants you to be a soul winner, disciple maker. Come on, He wants your marriage good, your kids good. Come on, He wants you healthy and wealthy, and then He wants you on fire for God. Say amen. But that's right here. That's fear. We'll bring you down. Ooh, somebody give God a praise. I'm preaching better than you are clapping today, son. That's a weak, weak, weak clap. I need somebody, don't clap for me. Give him a clap because he's speaking. He's giving answers. Say it, say it. Say, Lord, make me a high achiever. All right. So, oh, you guys ready? I'm out of time. I'm going to wrap it up. You good? Okay. Here's good right here. Somebody say it's good. Okay. Paul said, Paul the apostle was the highest achiever as far as a minister. This guy was a high level, high ranking official in the army of God. This was the man of God. This was the man that God trusted to write three quarters of the New Testament. This guy, everywhere he went, planted churches. The devil knew his name. One time these guys tried to cast out a demon. These guys, the seven sons of Skeezer, they were called. And they were trying to cast a demon out of it. The, they said, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, come out. And the demon talked back. He said, Peter, I know. And Paul, we sure know no Paul. But you, who the heck are you? And the demon jumped on him, took all their clothes off, beat them naked, and they ran down the block butt naked. How many know when the devil knows your name, you got some authority, some influence. Paul walked into a city, the devil goes, uh-oh, might as well pack up, we're out of here. He's kicking us out. So Paul was a high achiever. Because of it, he was always under attack. So if you're going to be a high-level thinker, a high achiever, you're going to go far in life, you're always going to be under attack. So you have to be able to be under attack and still be cool. Under attack and not flip out. Under attack and attack back. <laughs> under attack and be like, what? We're under attack? Oh, okay, let's fight. What? Well, what's, what does that look like? That looks like Jesus on his way to take a city, a territory, and the storm breaks out. Where's Jesus? He's on a pillow, asleep, resting, disciples freaking out. We're under attack. We're going to die. We're going to sink. Jesus gets up. He's like, what? What's up? Jesus, we're under attack. He's like, this? He's like, storm, calm down. Storm calms down. The disciples are like, wait a minute. And the, and, the, and the Lord looked at him and said, listen, I'm training you to be like me. You're going to be high achievers, Peter, James, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke. You're all going to be high achievers, Bartholomew. 
You're all going to be high achievers. I need you to stop freaking out when things go wrong and stop yielding to fear and confessing fear. This whole storm has been sent by Satan because Satan wanted to put pressure on your mind and on your emotions and in your belief. So you're speaking fear, acting in fear, and you're causing the storm to try to kill us. But you got to stand up and live above the storm like the eagles, and you got to declare to the storm, calm down. i got authority over you. That's a high achiever. That, that's not done by might or power. That's not positive thinking alone. Eventually your positive thinking will run out of positiveness. That's something that, that's a man connected to the life of God. That's a man connected to truth. That's a man connected to the spirit of God. Paul said, this is what happens to me. He goes, I get shipwrecked. I get snake bit. I get lied on. I get cheated. Everywhere I go, they try to beat me. And every day, the care of the ministry comes on me. The weight of it. And like anything, ministry has a lot of weight. Just like your business has weight. Just like being a husband and a wife and, and being a parent in this last day has weight. Everything has weight. And Paul says every day this weight comes on me. 3,000 pound gorilla jumps on me. Ooh, called ministry. What's your 3,000 pound gorilla? If you ain't doing much in life, you probably ain't got a lot of weight. Now, I'm not going to degrade you because, you know, you may be coming out of bondage right now. And that's your gorilla. Coming out of fear, coming out of anxiety, coming out of depression, coming out of suicide, coming out of addiction. But you're in Freedom Center now. And we're going to get you free from that. And then once you're free from that, we're going to start giving you responsibility. We're going to tell you you can be the head, not the tail. Lender, not the borrower. Above, not beneath. You can be the owner. Come on. The head, not the, not the, you can be the lender, not the borrower, son. You can be the owner of the property, not the renter all your life. We're going to show you how to do that here. And when you become the owner, you're going to feel the weight of it. Boom. We're going to find out what kind of character you have. What's character? In that sense, it's the ability to take all of that, all of the care, all of the anxiety, all of the worry, all of the stress, all of the details, daily, daily, and go into the presence of God. Heavy. Lord, I got some weight, but I'm going to give it to you now. Ready? I can't handle it. I ain't created to carry it. I'll carry your burden. It's easy. I'll carry your yoke of life. But, Lord, I'm going to give you the care of these kids. I'm going to give you the care of this crazy husband. I'm going to give you the care of all this staff. I'm going to give you the care of the sickness in the body. I'm going to give you the care of the bill. I'm going to give you the care of this anxiety. Now, come out the presence of God. I'm light. Come on, somebody. And I'm ready to run and not get weary. I'm ready to walk and not faint. I'm ready to step into the territory that God prepared for my life. I'm ready to possess my possession. I'm ready to take my promise. I'm ready to receive my inheritance. I'm ready to lay hold of what belongs to me. I'm ready to claim and name what God said is mine. Somebody shout like you're about to cast. Casting all your care. Somebody say all my care. Thank God for three people. Say all of it. Come on, somebody say all my care. Look at your neighbor say all. Come on, tell them say all. Come on, tell them say all. Means what? Upon him, why? Because he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, he's walking around like a roaring lion. He's looking for who he can devour He's trying to put this care on you. He knows if I can get this care on them, if I can get her to carry her kids and carry her husband and him carry his family and carry the company and if he's carrying everything, I can get him. But, but Peter said, you got to resist him. Steadfast in the faith. Knowing you're not the only one going through this. Everyone's going through the same thing. Verse 10. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you've suffered a while. After you've carried it and give it to the Lord. He's going to perfect you. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. Cast your care, your concerns, distraction, anxieties, burdens, and worries upon the Lord. Commit to them. Roll them on him. Roll them away from you. Remove them from you. It's the picture. Here it is. And I'm going to close. It's the picture of a camel. And the camel is at night, and the camel needs to go into the castle for protection. 
But there's only, you got to go through the eye of a needle. And the eye of a needle doesn't fit a camel. The eye of a needle only fits a human being. It's a very little sliver. So an army can't break through one person at a time. So the man comes up with a camel full of all his stuff. But the stuff and the camel can't fit through the way it is. So Jesus said, if you're going to come into the kingdom my way, you got to come through the eye of a needle. Well, how can I get my camel through? And how can I get all my stuff through? Well, the Lord said, well, what you have to do is you have to roll it off the camel and take it through one piece by piece. So what happened, the camel would have to kneel down, lay to the side, and the weight of what the camel was carrying would fall off. And that's what the Lord says you have to do with your burden, with your care, with your children, with your fear, with your anxiety. you got to go in the presence of God and say, God, I can't enter what you have for me with all this burden. I can't enter what you have for me with all this worry. I can't go to the next level. If I'm breaking down now, imagine me going to the next level. It's going to kill me, Lord. And you ain't going to kill me. You come to give me life. So, Lord, show me how to give you the burden. Show me how to walk in strategy. Show me how to walk in strategy. Come on, somebody. In your plan. I'll give it to you. i We're trying to get through, we're trying to fulfill the purpose of God with all this stuff. And we keep hitting our heads. We keep ramming the wall. We keep ramming the wall. And we're bloodied up and we're tired and we're weary. And we're, Lord, what's wrong? Lord, what's wrong? Lord, what's wrong? The Lord says, if you're fearful, you can't come into the kingdom. When God was about to take his men into battle, there was thousands of soldiers. And God said, get rid of all of them because they're fearful. He ended up with 300 called Gideon's army. And with 300, God did more with 300 than he could do with 3,000 because God can't use the fearful. God can't use the fearful. He'll love them, but he can't use them. He'll love them, but he can't trust them. He'll love them, but they, he, he got to bench them. He got to shelf them because their prayerlessness is killing their calling. Instead of taking that yoke to the prayer closet every day, they're trying to carry it on their own. Willpower and self-stamina, and I can make it, and I could that's pride. If you got lifted up, you'd think it was you. But when you know I can't carry this, when you know it's too heavy, when you know I'm not able, but he's able, and you declare it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. I give him my care. I give him my worry. I do what I can do and let the Lord do the rest. Somebody give God a praise. It's powerful. Come on, if you're going to praise him, praise him. Like, see, some of you are trying to fear. Whoa, what does this mean? You got to give it to him. Come on, by faith, just give it to him right now. Come on, just say, Lord, it's yours. It's your husband. It's your wife. It's your children. It's your business. It's yours. Come on, somebody. Do not fear. You're not going to be ashamed. You won't be disgraced. You won't be put to shame. You'll forget the shame of your past. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. He'll bring it to pass. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Stand on your feet. I'm done. We're going to give the Lord our care today. Now look at me. Somebody showed me this illustration years ago, and I never, I never lost it. This is my little mint, my mint. Yeah? Okay, here, Pastor Miguel, take that from me. Okay? Now give it back to me. See how fast he gave that back to me? Come closer. That's what we do. We say, Lord, here's my family. And we say, Lord, give it back to me. And the Lord says, okay. Say, you represent the Lord, okay? He said, Lord, here's my son. Thank you, Lord, I'm in peace. You're going to deal with him. I'll only do what you tell me to do with him. Oh, what am I going to do with him? Give it back. Now the Lord, can't, the Lord can't do nothing with him because he's in your hands now. This is what's happening in your ministries, in your business, small group leaders. You don't carry it. You obey God. You leave the results to him. You're walking by faith. Come closer. Oh, what am I going to do about my small group? It's never going to grow. It's never going to grow. It's in your hands now. And if it grows, you'll get the credit. 
If your business grows, you'll get the glory. If your marriage gets straight, you'll get the glory. But when you give it to him and you only do what he tells you to do in that marriage, you only do what he tells you to do with those children, you only say what he tells you to say, all of a sudden success comes. You realize it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit of God. Lord, take care of it. And you're going to have to do this every day, sometimes all day, out loud. Lord, it's yours. I ain't going to fear. I say it all the time to myself. I, 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 I ain't picking that up. That ain't mine, Lord. That's too heavy for me. I ain't strong enough. I'll do what you tell me to do. I won't go to Tarsus when you tell me to go to Nineveh and jack everything up. I'll, I'll, go, to, I'll, I'll, go, to, I'll go to Nineveh. I'll, go to, I'll obey you, but I ain't carrying this boat. I, I, my responsibility is to not make sure these people repent. That's your responsibility. I'll show up. I'll do, your, I'll do what I'm supposed to do, but you're going to have to do the rest, Lord. But we, what do we do? We say, Lord, I'm going to take care of it. And the Lord goes, fine. How's it working out for you? How's the marriage working out? How's the kids working out? How's the finance working out? How's your health working out? How's your relationship with me? How's your peace working out? I ain't got none. Of course, because you're God right now. And fear has got you carrying everything. Devil's got you like his pack mule, walking around heavy, burdened. Some of you look good. You're in shape. You're skinny as a nail, but you're fat spiritually. You're carrying all this stuff. You're yoked down. You're burdened down. You're sweating. You're sick spiritually because you're trying to carry everything. That's that pride. Devil's got you where he wants you. But today, you're going to say, Lord, it's yours. Here's my son. Here's my daughter. Here's my business. I'm going to obey you, and that's it. The results, come on, I got three claps and an amen. But people are getting convicted in the house of God today. Come on, I want you to throw your hands up by faith and say, Lord, today I repent of the spirit of fear and pride in my life. I renounce you in Jesus' name. I cast on the Lord all my finance, all my family, all my need, every situation, all my job, all my career, all my disciples, all the souls. I give it to you, Lord. It's yours. I'm only going to do what you tell me to do. I'm only going to say what you tell me to say. From this day forward, I renounce the power of fear in my life. I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I declare I'm a son and daughter of God. And I'm led by the Spirit of God. Therefore, I declare I'm led into prosperity. I'm led into breakthrough. I'm led into healing. I'm led into freedom. I'm led into my destiny. Throw your hands up and give God some praise. Come on. Worship. Come on, give it to the Lord. Say, it's yours, Lord. One of the reasons, look at me. One of the reasons when you come in, we say lift your hands. The Bible says lift your hands, but it's also a sign of surrender. Lord, I don't feel it. Lord, I feel pressure. Lord, I feel torment. Lord, I feel anxiety. Lord, I feel fearful. Lord, I feel stressed out. But I'm going to give you the sacrifice of praise. And by faith, I'm going to give you the fear. By faith, I'm going to give you the family. By faith, I'm going to give you the doctor report. And I'm going to give you the sacrifice of praise by faith. I don't care how I feel. I'm going to praise you anyway. I lift my hands as a sign. I'm giving you the worry. I'm giving you the fear. And watch what happens. God said, I'll give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I need everybody by faith to lift your hands to heaven and give God that yoke. Come on. Hi, how you doing? I want to take a minute and I want to talk to you about the power of partnership. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, Paul the Apostle said something very, very powerful that has changed my life and I believe it can change your life. He said that my God would supply all your need. Paul did not say that their God would supply, but he said that his God would supply because the Philippian church partnered with Paul. Paul realized something very, very powerful, that the same blessing that was on his life was now available to the Philippian church. And that is a very powerful spiritual principle. And I want you to pray about this principle, about partnership. If you feel in your heart as you pray to partner with this ministry, I believe that this anointing that's on this ministry, which is the anointing to bring freedom and to restore lives, will come into your life. It will come into your family. And I believe the next thing you know, you're going to experience the same freedom that thousands experience every week. As you partner with us, I believe the same anointing that's on this house is going to come on your house. 
The way you can partner is number one, pray, and number two, give. You can give online, you can give through mailing, wherever you feel led to do that. But I do believe the same blessing that's on this house will be on your house. And if you commit to pray for us, we commit to pray for you. And I believe the same freedom that's in this house is going to come to your house. We love you, God bless you, and we'll hopefully hear from you soon. Bye-bye.